Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Zcast. I'm your host, Burn. I'm joined with by Kyle. Hello. And also joined by Squee. E- yes. All right. Hi, everyone. And we're going to start week 11. I do believe. Yes, yes, week 11. Um, starting off, we're going to go over the previous week's matches. Match 1, Androids versus Super Saiyans. This oh, was that a, was a good match. Yeah, yeah, it was a really good match. It was, it was very tight, very very tight for both teams. Well, until all of those Super Saiyans started transforming, transforming. So, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, I like that we got to see some supers or ultimates that we never get to see, like Sadistic Dance and Heat Dome. Those were fun. Yeah, yeah, Perfect definitely. Barrier came. Oh, that's true. Perfect Barrier came out, too. Yeah, that was a crazy mm-hmm. match. They went all out on that one. Uh, yeah. Super Saiyans got the uh, got the win, but honestly, God, that could have gone either way. Yeah. Really f- well fought between both teams. Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> I, think it I think that kind of match goes to show why the Super Saiyans are starting in base form or not in base form but form super saiyan one because if they started in the higher forms good god it's almost like we have other seasons we can point to for evidence yeah, it's true yeah but it it just shows that it's a good nerf like it's not yeah. game breaking or anything but you know they just have to try a little for now and it's yeah. not like we're stopping them from transforming Exactly. They're... Oh god, I don't think anyone can complain about the nerf. They're flipping eight and three, or eight and two. Well, exactly. Yeah, eight and three. Yeah, eight and three. That it was just a minor thing. But no, that match was was a fantastic match. It was uh, two dominant teams that uh, brought their A game because I don't think either side derped that hard. There were no. mistakes here and there, of course, but it wasn't like one of those like. Oh my god, my team just didn't do anything. It was uh it was a really fun match. Yeah. It was really great. All right, and on to match 2, Ginyu versus Dragon Ball Warriors. Speaking about games where people derp. Yeah. It was unfortunate. Freaking Nam just had Goldo's number. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, and it's sad too, but because this was the first week in the entire season that Goldo has not had Power Body, which, in my opinion, is a good move for them. Yeah, I agree. I don't think he needs to have Power Body, and I hope this doesn't uh, dissuade them from their choice. Um, always remember that one week is not really enough to tell much. Um, but yeah, it, it started off strong for both sides. It looked like it was going to be a great match, and then Nom just went out there, and he was Nom. Yeah, well, and that's the thing they have to remember is it was not. It's not like yeah. it was just like any character. It's like one of the characters that's been consistently feared and doing well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so even if it was a new build, that's no reason to blame the new build on it. You know, it's just it was up against yeah. Nam. I would also like to point out that freaking Raccoon went toe to toe with Tao. Yes, he did. It it was amazing. I think he was distracted by the cleavage. Yeah, yeah, he might have been. That and his head was probably, you know, all jostled around after those all those grabs. They're doing like 4K of damage every single time. Yeah. Yeah, he has insane damage. And there's someone else in the league that has like 5,000 damage with their grabs. I forget who, but they're just insane. Yeah. They Captain can be Guinea really. Was... Go ahead. Uh, Captain Guinea was doing really well this match too. Like it's yeah. it's nice to see him consistently doing well. Yeah, he is showing huge improvement. I will even say that um, if he had gotten his body switch off, it might have been a different outcome. Oh, definitely. Oh, that would have been well. No, did anyone from DBW die? No. During that match? No, but they were all on like one bar of health, and if Ginyu had gotten the body switch out, it would have been enough life to maybe turn it around. That's what I'm saying. Oh uh, yeah, it would have been. Yeah, it would have been interesting, especially Plus, since you've considered the fact that Ginyu's been doing great with melee. 
So basically, he gets minuses to everything, but he can still do melee, which is what he's been kicking ass with the, uh, the past few weeks anyway. So it'd pretty much be giving him four extra bars of health to do what he's just been doing anyway. Mm -hmm. Plus, True. plus um, he was on an, a really uber tank build, which is the same thing that I've been having Tien on for the past few weeks. Well, for most of the season. And he's been doing really well. If he were to transform with Eternal Life and the Defense Plus, which might even out his negatives, could have been pretty crazy. I, I honestly, I will say this, I like where Ginyu is going. Um, you know, the sky is still a limit for Ginyu Force. They can still very, very easily make it into the playoffs. Oh, yes. um, I, I don't know. It's not going to be as easy to get to your top seed, but who cares? You can make it to the playoffs. You can you can do this. Do not give up. Your team is improving and it's going places, and you've got four more weeks to show it. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's still only like two matches away from knocking either the Saiyans or the Blades out. I find that, gr that that's great. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, and on the other side, Dragon Ball Warriors, I mean, again, your team as well. Had a slow start. Uh, you're starting to pick up steam. You're at the bottom of your division. Are they still at the bottom? Are they they're still are playing They're tied with up, the Vals. Right? They're, no, tied, so they're with tied, the tied with the Vals now. Okay, so you still have a chance of getting in there. You still have a chance of uh, getting the playoffs and showing what you got. And you've got a really powerful team. You've got Nam working brilliantly. You've got Pilaf uh, better than he's ever been before. Um, you know, you, you, you've got, if you can get Kid Goku and early Goku working uh, a little bit better, you can have a really powerful team. Mm-hmm. Oh, without a doubt. All right, I think that's it. Yeah, that's about all I need to say. Yeah, I got nothing. All right, match three, Namix versus Saiyans. Bardock was friggin' amazing in this match. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Dear Lord, Nappa was even pretty good in this match. Yeah. Yeah, he was... He was a, well, the nice thing was he actually kept throwing out his Blazing Storm B2 instead of just his Volcano one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, I, what I liked about this match, it was one of those where it started off looking like the Saiyans had it, and then it then it turned back around and looked like the Namekians had it shut down. And then it turned back around again, and Saiyans got it. It was great. Yeah. Early Piccolo was doing great, too. Yeah. The, the only thing is, late Piccolo just dropped the ball. I don't know what's been up with him. Yeah, well, I think it was part. Part, there's definitely something wrong with him. They, he does need work. But, I mean, the other part is, too, I mean, he was in and out in a flash. Yeah. You know, he didn't have a whole lot of time to derp around much. I agree, he's not what he used to be. Um, I, I honestly wouldn't know what to do with him because he was amazing when he was a spammer. And he was amazing when he's been melee heavy. The problem with late Piccolo, and I'm sure this is the problem the team's trying to deal with, is that they can't do him to do him get him to do either consistently. They can't get him to be a consistent spammer, and they're having trouble getting him to be a consistent melee damager. And when he's kind of floating in the middle there, he's just not what he could be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I think the best bet, if they could just get him to throw out light grenades like he used to with that super plus two. You guys remember, I think it was two seasons ago, he would throw those out like Tapion and they'd be doing nine, ten thousand damage a pop. Mm hmm Oh yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. But that was I mean, season obviously four. Yeah, I mean obviously I wish that I'm sure they wish that they could get it working like that again too. And I just wish him the best of luck. I I think the rest of the team is really solid. Uh, early Piccolo is, is strong. Nail is better than he's ever been. He had a great last stand. Um, you know, King mm -hmm. Piccolo has always been pretty decent. And Tambourine, he's not what he was last season, but he's still a threat. Yeah, he definitely is. Oh, yeah. But yeah, good job, Saiyans. Mm -hmm. Freaking immortal Bardock. Ugh. And I have to go up against that next week. <laughs> yep. It's so nice seeing Bardock on his, uh, you know, his super key, you know, spamming type move, uh, build that he used to be on. Yeah. He's so good with that. Anyways, match four: Cold versus Earth Defenders. This was a really good match to watch. Yeah. Uh, I kind of disagree, actually. 
I was hoping, and and don't get me wrong, I am not saying that the, the, the I'm not faulting Cold for this. I was hoping to see Earth Defenders A game versus Cold A game, so we could get a definitive who is the best team. Obviously, we didn't get that. Cold decided to bench their best player and did not come with their best lineup. And I actually applaud that choice because the truth of the matter is win or lose, all you're fighting for are bragging rights if you're Team Cold. Your divisional standing is not going to change one bit. So, you know what? Rotate out your best player, maybe take this as a loss and ensure that you can get more wins down the road. I think that's a great strategy. I, as a a viewer, am slightly disappointed because I really wanted to see these two teams at their best go at it. And you saw the... The consequence of not bringing their A game. Yeah. Right. We definitely brought ours. Dear God, yeah. And Tien, flip and Tien. He almost was as good as he was that one time in season one. Yeah, he, yeah, he was. I think, almost destroyed Cooler with maybe taking... Almost. He took Cooler down to like a bar of health with like 300 damage to him. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. I just loved during that match he kept put. Uh, pointing out that Tien actually had more health than when Cooler came in originally. Yeah. When Cooler came in, he was at two bars of health, and by the time Cooler was at one bar, Tien had already been at three bars and three and a quarter bars, if I recall correctly. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Goes to show what a tank build can do. Ha ha. <laughs> Indeed. Anyways, I I hope cold luck. I know they're still going to be fucking amazing, and they're going to have a really hard time next week. I can tell you that much. Because it's going to be cold versus androids. Yeah. And that's probably m- might be why they did it. I mean, like, if I'm cold and I'm thinking about it, there's two ways that they were probably looking at this. Way number one, who are we going to have a tougher time with? Earth Defenders or Androids. And it's possible they figured they'd have a tougher time with the Androids. It's also possible they figured we're going to have a hell of a hard time with Earth Defenders and a really hard time with Androids. So let's get Frieza in the one we have a better chance of winning. I don't know what their strategy behind it was, but whatever the case may be, I think rotating Frieza out now was a good decision. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. All right. On to match five, Blades versus Muscle. This was another close one. Mm-hmm. And I would like to point out for the record, Muscle did not get a build in. Yeah, so. that is true. And they still won just barely. Mm-hmm. I, I do like that uh with the rotation even being randomized, their starter had Savior on. Mm-hmm. Tagged out, and then when he came in, he used it. Yep. It was uh, it was amazing. The thing is, I take away from the match was um, that you know Team Muscle is just a powerful team, but we already knew that. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yajirobe is showing some consistency in how mm-hmm. good he is. That's scary. Because mm-hmm. yep. pretty much, uh, pretty much everyone on the Blades has that amazing potential to be great. Janemba just has the sheer power. Uh, we've seen what Cyborg Tao can do. And uh, uh, Tapion, you know, he's freaking spammy on sometimes. Trunks has even been a lot better this season. And the fact that they have Yajirobe pretty much working now is really scary. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, the Blades are... I really think that the Blades are going to give it another season or two, and they're going to be a North Kai domination team. Oh, without a doubt. Mm Mm-hmm. But yeah, well done, Muscle. Yes, way to go. Um, please Trap don't shooter. do that again. It was over. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't yeah. know what else you need from that. <laughs> well, Trap what do you mean? Right? Please don't do that again, dude. They're not catching up to the Earth Defenders. No, no. I I was talking about not putting the builds in. Oh, I was because... like, dude, you're, you're just like, look at Bird at the top of the league, staring down, going, "Oh no, 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 no! <laughs> you're no. too close yeah. to me. You're too close <laughs> no. to me. Get away." <laughs> I, I was mention I was trying to mention how I had to randomize everything, save for your bench. We were kind enough to use your bench, um, but 
other than that, it was it was painful having to see. Oh, hey, Broly's your starter, and he has Savior. Oh. I actually thought Broly as a starter was a good move. Just saying, you guys it, might it want to think good. about that. Oh yeah. I can tell you that uh, Ko wasn't happy to see him win. Yeah, I can tell you that. Oh. I mean, I'm I'm happy Viper for Viper, you know, because we're we're pals and stuff. So I'm happy he won, but I was also cursing his name. It's like you goddamn bastards. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's but the next no. match? Uh, match next... six: Gohans versus Rugrats. That was a good match, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just Team and uh, match seven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I just um, could not remember anything. I, 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 yeah, I'm actually trying to think too. Um, the Gohans had a bit of derping going on on their part. I do remember yeah. that. Future uh, the did Rugrats. Stuff. Yeah, Future did do stuff. Well, Future's a, a strong character. He he's one of those ones that also has an insane grab. Um, yeah. But the Rugrats are just really the Rugrats are. At the top of their, uh, not the top of their division, but really high up there, and they deserve to be because they're a powerful team. Yeah. Oh yeah, and it just goes to show that, um, you know, the two characters derped last week against the Blades, but they're still good. You know, there's mm-hmm. no re- you know, they still did well this week. Yeah. Goten stayed on the same AI and dominated. So it goes to show you shouldn't just go. Oh hey, he. He derped twice in one week, or twice in consecutive weeks, and then let's just change his AI just out of, out of the blue. <laughs> could have been, could have been a bad week, and those two weeks, I want to say, they were bad weeks. <laughs> I need to correct myself. Yeah. They are at the top of their division. They're tied with the androids for seven and mm-hmm. four. They are. Oh, jeez. So, I mean, think about that. The androids who were six and zero oh, uh, a few weeks ago and. Uh, I don't think are tied. You don't think what? I don't think they faced off against each other yet. Who? Uh, Rugrats and the androids? Yeah. Um. um they no, did. They, the yeah, androids they won. Okay, so they're not technically tied, but uh, as far as stats wise, they're tied, and it's still anyone's game. As far as they got more than enough time to surpass the androids, and yeah. they've been winning most of their matches, so I could see that happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it all depends how the rest of the season looks for both the androids and the blades. Yeah, and, uh, Rugrats. Yep. Yeah, I I think that match was great. If the Gohans had not benched Ultimate Gohan, it could have been a different, different game. But yeah, I think they had to. Well, yeah, and, and besides, I mean, I think the Rugrats are a bit deceptive. I think that there's still this mentality that they're not that great of a team, so let's go ahead and get one of our strong benches out because I think we've got this. And... um it's a, it's a stigma that a lot of people have built up because for for seasons and seasons and seasons, the Rugrats have been a mediocre team. Yeah. No. Stats-wise, they are on par, if not more powerful, than the Super Saiyans, in, in my opinion. Oh, jeez. Just, just base stats-wise, the Rugrats are that powerful. Y- you should not underestimate them. They have Gotenks. They have the ability next season to start GT Goku in Super Saiyan 3 and then get to Super Saiyan 4. Oh, Jesus. And they have Cell Jr. No, no, he did go Super Saiyan 4 this time, though. Yeah, that's true, It was true amazing. Too. For five amazing. seconds. And, yeah, what? Well, shish. Shish. <laughs> Actually, yeah, and if you want to take a look at stats-wise, the Rugrats and the, the Super Saiyans as a team only have an average damage of 6,000 difference. They mm-hmm. are really... They are ranked number five in the league, so, I mean, they're an incredibly powerful team. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, did uh, anyone ever answer your question about why Future Gohan has two hands? Uh, what do you mean? No, I mean, there's no, there's no, there's no real answer for it. It's just the developers decided to give him two hands on his character model. 
Well, yeah, no, they, uh, I was reading they tried to give him one hand, but it messed with the game. So that's why they had to give him two, even though he only used really? the one because in his attacks. Independent modders found a way to do it. Well. Touche. Well, I, I guess it was giving them issues. <laughs> that's what I Well, heard. it also might be, too, that maybe the independent mod does give the same issues because they don't have to care about quality control. Well, yeah, that too. So, on to match seven. Val yeah. versus Boo. Oh, poor Val's. Boo yeah. Were really good this week. And again, yeah. this, this was another week where um, Pan, just like Goldo, was on a non power body build. And she was doing pretty well. Yeah. yeah, I still don't know if I agree with that, though, because I think part of the reason why Pan has been doing so well lately is because of Power Body. Yeah. Um, I mean, now, uh, that's not a, a solid, you must do this, or you, this is like, you know, Squee says this should be the way to go. No, but I do think the Power Body on Pan is a smart move. Okay. Honestly, I would say uh, the best place to put it, if you can keep the same base build, is on Say a Woman. And uh, this is something that mo a lot of people should consider, that um, Power Body has a use that many people overlook. We used to do this for Yamcha. Characters who spam rush moves very uh, a lot, like Say a Woman 2, Yamcha's... Um, you know, Wolfing Fist and, and I mean, and Fidel, all she's got is is rush B2s and she uses them constantly. As you all know, all it takes is one back fist at the wrong time and that move is canceled out. Power body plows right through that. We used to, this was seasons ago, so we don't know, you know, obviously the, the league has evolved, but uh, we used to put it on Yamcha and it would almost ensure that Wolfing Fist would hit unless they dodged it or did the uh, power block. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, the problem, of course, is could you put Power Body on Say a Woman 2 without having to remove what makes her work? I don't know. I, I think you might be able to. Eh, it, it, it like depends. I said, it's possible. Um, yeah. 18 did okay. Uh, Say a Woman did great. Pan did pretty good. Um... I'm trying to remember. Fasha didn't really do all that much, did she? Yeah, I think she was just destroyed more more so I'm, than she didn't really do anything. Yeah, I feel bad for Fasha. I mean, she used to be number one in the league last season. Now, uh... yeah, yeah. Actually, I can find out. Give me a second. She's thirty fifth in the league. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll. They'll fix her eventually. They will. I have confidence. Oh, I'm sure they will. And besides, they still got a Rayleigh at number three. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's it's uh, Val's a surprising team because I, when I look at them, I see a very powerful team. I do not see a team that's tied for last place in their division, and it just baffles me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to be fair, they're five and six. And almost half of the entire league is five and six right now. We have seventeen Very true. five and six. So that's true. It's kind of kind of evening out, sorta. Of. It's a really close um close division or close league. Save for Derp and Ginyu. But yeah, it, yeah, it's pretty close. And speaking of Derp, match eight. Majins versus Derp. I finally win one. Finally. You broke the streak. Yay. Poor Derp. Yeah. They now they they are now in an ultimatum. They have to win the next four weeks, period. Or they are out. Yep. And even if they win the next four weeks, they may not still they still may not make it. Yep. Well, next week they face the Gohans. So that's super important right there. Mm -hmm. Yes. With ultimate mm -hmm. Gohan in. Yes. But they'll have Salsa. Yeah. They will have their elite. I'm still yes. reeling at that. They have their elite. <laughs> and I gotta say, Hercule was doing really well against Majin Vegeta. Yeah. See, here, here's the thing. Um, 
here's their best chance to make it to the playoffs. They beat the Gohans, and then they win, um, you know, three more times, and the Gohans lose. I think what twice, or they have to lose all three. Um, no, they're 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 what? Right now they're three behind or four behind? They're four behind the Gohans. Right. Yeah. If they, they win against the Gohans, that pretty much counts like two. Yeah. Right. So all they would need is two more wins. No, they would still need three more after that. So three more wins and three more losses from the Gohans. So yeah, basically, like I said, they would have to win out and the Gohans would have to lose out almost mm -hmm. exclusively. And, and the only... that's And Derp's going against, against three really good teams in those matches. Yeah, they're going up against Gohans the... first, then Valkyries, then Cold, then Blades. They got this. Yeah, oh, they do. without I, a doubt. It depends, because they also have the divisional match against Namek. If Namek starts losing really, really badly, and Derp just wins out, it could still happen. Maybe. Well, yeah, I mean, like, the same thing I said for the Gohans applies equally to the Namekians. If the Derp wins out and the Namekians lose out, then, again, it's yeah. the same boat for both teams. So it, yeah. it doubles their chances, but, I mean, you know, double not point zero eight is still, you know, not point sixteen. <laughs> so it's still not that great of a chance. Yeah, but it's Derp. The champ will, yeah. you know, he'll come through. Yeah, I'd help. love to see it. I just think that yeah, this season has been really, really yeah. painful for Derby. It's been rough, really rough. The the decision to keep the Doria in has been biting them in the ass, in my opinion. Yeah, I but yeah. I think next season they'll see where a lot of the mistakes were made, and I think we'll see a lot better team Derp next season. Oh, definitely, definitely. Because I mean, we got Salsa that went elite. We've got a Hercule that last week he was spamming. Um, 19 has been, it hasn't been too bad. And once they figure out Devil Man, I'm sure they'll be a lot better off. Yeah. See, if they could get Herc back up to what he used to be, he used to be a spammer. And this season, he's not been spamming crap. Yeah. Except for last week. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, right, yeah, give me a second Soto. here. Uh, going to Team Derp, looking at Hercule, his number of B2s that he's thrown out. Um, uh, hang on. Uh, he's thrown out 20 and hit with 14. Yeah, I mean, 20 B2s over 11 weeks for Herc? That's nothing. That's two B2s a match. He needs to be thrown out five. Yeah. Yeah. He he needs his B2s to be in the 40s at this point. And he used to do it. And especially considering the fact that half, uh, you know, half of his dynamic mess up punches don't do anything. And I would love to fix that. But when he was most effective, he was effective because he was throwing out B2s so much that it didn't matter they were low in damage. It didn't matter that half of the dynamic mess up punches didn't work. There were just so many of them that he was a factor. And I think that, that, that Derp needs to find a way to get that back again. Mm-hmm. Oh, without a doubt. Hey, Kyle, can you please um, navigate us through the Zcast questions? I need to go AFK for a few minutes. Oh, okay. I have to get to there. Put and while you do that, spot. I can ask you, as the coach for Margins, what do you see your chances of making it to the playoffs are? Uh, about 50-50 right now. I mean, it really depends... Uh, I mean, who won, luckily, who, uh, have you faced Muscle, or who's won between you two? Oh yeah, oh no, Mo that was the week that Bojack decided he remembered how to throw ultimates out. They beat right, them. right. So, so you technically can't just tie them; you have to beat them. Yes, I have to get two wins, and they have to get two losses, and then after that, our records can match. So, you know, I, I, because hopefully next week, you know, I hate to say it, but I think I have a good chance of them losing because they're up against the Super Saiyans. Oh my gosh. And you still got to fight the Super Saiyans and the Earth Defenders in the next no, no, four no, weeks. No, 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 no. No, I already beat the Super Saiyans. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. So you, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I was looking at 
both your different teams. Never mind. You only have to face the Earth Defenders left in your division. Yeah, I mean, that's that's going to be friggin' rough. At least I don't have to worry about beating... I don't need to worry about getting that tiebreaker as much as I need to just beat Muscle. Right. So, I mean, Muscle well, next hard... week you got... Next week you got the Guinea for us, which you have a decent shot at. Even, oh, even yeah. if they are doing well, better, you have a decent shot at that. It depends um, which Guinea for shows up. Yeah, exactly. And then you've got um, then Earth Earth Defenders. Defenders. Then and you've then... got Namekians, and then last you've got Rugrats. God, that is a tough schedule. Yeah, I mean, but... even if you count Ginyu and Nam Namekians, you could take those. Majin, I mean, Earth Defenders and Rugrats are going to be tough. Yeah, but Muscle has Super Saiyans next week. Mm -hmm. Cold the week after that. Gohans, right. week 14. And, and then, then Dragon Ball Warriors. Yeah, so... Yeah, so I'm with you. I'd say that's about a 50-50 shot, making it into the yeah. playoffs right there. Yeah. Um, and I finally got us to the Zcast questions. Yes. Sorry about um, that. Oh, there you go. Which was the last question... Um, the last one was from Vindicated, so I can take from Gomel Jack. Okay, there we go. Yeah. I'm sorry, I had somebody knocking on my door. I had to answer it. It was a rooster, um, wasn't it? No, actually, it was the internet, dude. Oh. From Time Warner Cable. Ooh. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, Gomel Jack, on the 21st of January, if there is a change of difficulty for Season 7... Do you think there would be any consideration on bringing back any of the currently banned characters from the League, or will the base stats just not allow it? There's a reason why they're banned. That's all. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that, that, that should be the answer to the question. We're not going to suddenly unban characters that we have decided are too powerful for the League. They're not going to get unpowerful. They're not going to... Their stats are not going to suddenly not be overpowered. Yeah, yeah especially since if we did a change the difficulty, it would just go up. Yeah, and set it down, and that would just make them even more unbalanced and broken, probably. Well, uh, yeah. I will say that, uh, and I know I said I said this before that we might like next season have the difficulty. There is, and Bernard and I were talking. There is a big problem with that, which is that in that higher difficulty, people use B ones like mad, and that includes. And normally that's great. Hey, yeah, B one, except for when you have healing B ones, and that creates a great unfair advantage. So we can't mm -hmm. use that higher difficulty level until we find a way of dealing with that. Yeah, which just imagine Yajirobe with Sensu Bean that he actually uses. Yeah, let me let me put it to you this way. Burn, yeah, tell tell him what happened to you once. Let, let me put it to you this way. Um, this was just I turned it up to not the maximum, but right under the maximum difficulty setting, the one that is hacked and uh, just one level above the difficulty we are currently using. Grandpa Gohan versus Grandpa Gohan. The match lasted one round, lasted an hour and a half. Holy shit. An hour and a mm, freaking half <laughs> of just because constant sleep. sleeps. Yes. Sleep into B2. Ha <laughs> ha. Yay. And then sleep into B2. And, uh, mm. and this was with no Pataras. Jesus. Yeah. So, so obviously, so right now, like I said, to use a higher difficulty level, I'd love it because, I mean, on the most part, I'd love for people to use more B1s. I'd love to have more dodges and more counters and more competent AI. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure it doesn't unbalance the league. But to answer your question, the truth is we will most likely never add banned characters back to the league unless we find a way to fundamentally change their stats. Yes. All right. On to the next question from Malachi on the 23rd of January. Assuming the staff decides to change the AI difficulty in Season 7, could we have a small exhibition match at some point be between now and the Tenkaichi Bowl so that teams can see what we can expect from the new difficulty setting? Between uh, now and the bowl? No, no, not between Ooh. now and the bowl because we don't want teams to be worrying about Season 7 when they're still in Season 6. Yeah, um, yeah. Besides that, like I said, we still have a serious complication we have to work through before we even consider using it. However, what would happen is if we decide to use it, all testing from this point on would be done at that difficulty level. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, not this point on, from the point of time where we decide, yes, we're going to use this. Um, so that is going to be, you know, people like, well, but testing might not be enough. Things might change. Yes, you're absolutely right. That's what the off season's for. Mm -hmm. And the second part to that question, or would this be something that we'll, we will see first during the off season when testing? We just answered that. So on to Harume Hikariseki. 25th of January. So not only did Cooler have a concussion, but he also came back looking for a deeper shade of purple than he should be due to lack of oxygen. I'm expecting Tien will be paying the Team Cold's medical bills since it's mainly his fault. So can you please teach him some self-restraint before the bowl? Uh, I'm sorry, but just like with any other sports team, uh, the the Dallas Cowboys aren't charged money if they injure one of the other teammates. That's kind of in your medical plan. Just True. putting that out there. We, uh, we, the, the, it's all, it's all in the contract. Your players signed that if they are injured during the matches, that all medical expenses are paid by team cold. <laughs> Unless of course we determine that there was some sort of foul play or damage outside the match, and in which case TN would personally be fined the money. But uh no no, it was uh brutal, but it was legit. Yep. Alright. Next one is from the K Rain. Um yesterday at eight fifteen AM. Will Vegeta Skits be returning or they are they a thing of the past? Um, well, you may have noticed that the past two weeks, the Vegeta skits have returned on the last episode of the week, and that is basically what's going to be happening. Um, I love doing the Vegeta skits, and I know you guys love the Vegeta skits, but doing three a week was n not just that it was a lot of work, but I felt that, um, you know, it's hard to write skits. It's, it's hard to be funny, guys. It's, it's hard to come up with funny ideas that make you laugh all the time. And if I have to do it three times a week, I feel like I dilute it. In other words, I feel like I try, what I was doing was taking a good idea and stretching it out to cover three skits when maybe it was only worth one or two. Um, so what I'm doing is at the last episode of every week, uh, we'll have the Vegeta skit. Mm -hmm. All right, on to the next question nice. from Zestan, uh, Dragon Caliber. Which match do you look forward to the most next week? Uh, <laughs> uh, let me take a look at the matches. Hang on. We have week twelve. We got uh, Boom versus Dragon Ball Warriors, Ginyu oh God, versus Majin, Rugrats, matches. Vals, Saiyans, Earth Defenders, Cold Androids, Blades, Namek, Super Saiyan Muscle, Gohan's Derp. Ooh, I would say I'm really looking forward to Super Saiyan versus Muscle, and I would say Cold versus Androids because those would be really good matches. Yeah, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to go with those. Uh, also, maybe Rugrats versus Vals. Hang on. If let's say the Vals win that, right now they're five and six. Rugrats are seven and four. That'd be make them. That would make the Vals only one win away from the Rugrats. That would make the division even more interesting. So that would yeah. be a fun match to watch. Yeah, I think I think next week has a lot of fun matches. Mm -hmm. For me personally, though, it's mostly the Super Saiyans muscle and the cold androids. The cold androids, because I'm pretty sure androids is going to be bringing their A game. I know cold is going to be bringing theirs. That's going to be two freaking titans fighting off. And the Super Saiyans versus muscle? There's no way I can't lose from that. <laughs> that that <Yeah>. is true. <laughs> Either way, it's, it's good. <laughs> It'll be good for me, too. Well, maybe. Well, if Muscle yeah, wins, hopefully. might not be good. But still, it's going to be an interesting match. And you're going I think to be just fighting... I match will be good for him. Yeah. You yeah. are going to be fighting your old team. Woohoo! Yes, I will be. There's so that'll be fun. Nostalgia. Yeah. All right, next question. What do you think of Yajirobe after his recent performances? I do believe we've answered this, right? 
Yeah, he's been amazing. Well, are, are we talking about the god? <laughs> <laughs> the god of cats. Um, I, I think he's been amazing. I, I, I don't expect to see the kind of performance we saw last week, week 10, uh, very often, if ever again. I mean, we might see it again, but not very often. But he is turning into a very strong player. Oh, yes, definitely. Anything else, Kyle? Uh, no, I mean, I think we put it pretty well that, like, you know, I was just, I remember saying how getting Yajirobe, who was probably their worst character for, into what he was is just amazing and they'll just be a devastating team. Mm hmm. All right. Next up, we have Sithspawn X, or X Sithspawn X. Um, yesterday. I know you guys don't like predictions questions usually, but I have one that I think might be interesting. Last season, we saw some teams do surprisingly well in the off season, uh, in the postseason, even making it into the semifinals and the Tenkaichi Bowl itself when they had appeared average at best during the regular season. And in a few cases, even have had losing records, the Gohans and Adroids come to mind. Are there any particular Dark Horse teams this season that you think might make similar runs based on what you've seen so far? I hate to do this, but I have to invoke the same thing as always because when the very nature of your question is a bit self-defeating because if a team appears to be weaker or only average, how in the world can we know if they're going to or even suspect if they're going to surprise us in the postseason? The teams you're talking about were exemplary simply because no one saw that coming. So to ask me to predict that which I can't predict is... I, I, what? I can't do that. Yeah, and plus, when there's like... set Almost half the league is at five and six, it's really hard to... Yeah. Give a good, you know, analysis on that. Especially East Kai, where like, it's only two wins, and it can upset everything. Yeah. Yup. I think... Derp is going to be the next um, bowl champions. I'm just putting that oh, out there. I they have the love champ. that. Yeah, that would be amazing. Um, and the next part of that, with four weeks in the regular season to go, there's plenty of time left for things to be shaken up. But if you had bet on one underdog, underdog making a deep postseason run, who would it be? Margins. <laughs> You're an underdog? Since when? Uh, what do you mean? Since when? I'm what? I've uh, I have the third lowest. You're still uh, a threat. You're threat. not an underdog. I kind of am. You're not an underdog. I don't know. It depends on how you look at it. If you look at stats only, they're an underdog. If you look at the team, my never been an underdog. Yeah. Uh, but see, like you know, you you flip the side of that coin, and it's like Dragon Ball Warriors would be considered an underdog always, no matter what. Then even if they have an undefeated record. Um, okay. Uh, I, I would say that um, I could see Dragon Ball Warriors or Ginyu Force having a deep run. Yeah. yeah. If the new Ginyu Force that we've been seeing the past couple of weeks shows up for the rest of the season, I could see them doing very well. Mm -hmm. I... I'm going to stick with my dirt prediction. And I'm going to bet all my zenny on it. Do you have any zenny left? No, I lost it week one. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Yay. All right, that concludes the questions. Now on to the predictions of next week. We have match one, Boo versus Dragon Ball Warriors. Um, <laughs> uh, Dragon Ball Warriors, who did they rotate out this week? Peel off. So they're getting and... peel off back, and Boo rotated out Oob. Evil Boo, I think? No. no Oob. Oob. Right, 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 right. They rotated out Oob. I'm going Boo's. I like Dragon Ball Warriors a lot, and I like peel off, but uh, I think Oob, I think Boo's are just really powerful right now. Oh, yeah. I think Dragon Ball Warriors, and the reason why is. Gotenks Boo still has to be rotated out twice, along with Evil Boo once and Majin Boo once. Ooh. I think they're probably going to be rotating Gotenks 
against um, Dragon Ball Warriors. So that's going to be very, very interesting. Especially since they have Tao. They will very likely have Nom. They have Pilaf Machine. Yeah. yeah, I'm still gonna go booze, but yeah, I see where you're coming from. I mean, yeah. I think it'll be a good match, but I'm oh yeah, it'll it'll booze. definitely be a good match. I don't. I think it's going to be a slaughter. <laughs> sure, sure thing. Um, next match: Ginyu versus Majins. Ginyu will have Berter, and Majins will have uh, Deborah. Yeah, I'm going margins. I wonder I mean, why. T to be fair, they're both technically my teams at one <laughs> point or another. Um, no, I just I have to have faith in my team always. But I, it's definitely not going to be an easy match, I don't think, with Ginyu Forest got Captain Ginyu working. Yeah. The fact they got that makes them scary. So um, it, it'll be interesting, especially with Berter in. Yeah. I have to say Majins simply because there's too many contingents for Ginyu Force. Ginyu has to perform like he's been the past couple of weeks. Um, you know, Jace has to be at the same level he usually is. Birder has to be at the same level he usually is. Raccoon has to uh, perform like we've been seeing the past few weeks. Whereas the Majins have already established that they are a consistently powerful team. Mm hmm. And every single one of their losses have been very close, save for the muscle match. Oh god, the muscle yep. match. I am going to have to go with the Majins. The reason being is, even though um, the Majin still has to rotate out Spovich twice, the Ginyu Force has to rotate out Jace twice. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So we might not see Jace this next week. I mean, technically, they still, they're done with all of their divisional matches, I think. Yeah, bum, they're bum, done. Bum, bum. So, that's going to be very tough if they rotate it out, Jace. Yeah, I mean, it really depends if they think they can get the win against the Majins with Jace in, or if they want to rotate him out now and try their luck against a team that's, you know, a different team. Mm-hmm. On to match three, Rugrats versus Vowels, a divisional match. The Rugrats will have Kid Trunks, and the Valkyries will have a Rayleigh. So That's tough. Yeah, that is tough. Um, oh, man. Um, each of them are going to have, going to have Chi-Chi, Say a Woman, um, a Rayleigh, and kid trunks the rest have one more bench left so it's just a coin toss i mean i am going to say the vowels just because i think i fear a Rayleigh a lot and i'm hoping fascia comes back to her old self because i've missed that fascia I'm also going to say the vowels along the same lines. Right now, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I, I was singing Rugrats praises and all that, but vowels have a Rayleigh who is consistently devastating. They have say a woman who's really good. Eighteen is a little iffy. Pan's a little iffy. Fasha's a little iffy. If any one of those perform, though, you've got three people on your team that are being awesome. Rugrats have Trunks who is devastating. GT Goku, which is meh. Chi Chi, who is better than she used to be, but still average, uh, maybe slightly above average. You know, Goten, who we don't know what to expect from Goten and Cell Jr. So, like, if I look at it, there's more variables on the Rugrats than there are on the Vowels. Yeah. I'm not yep. going to mention who I think they're going to bench, but if my prediction is correct, the Valkyries will win. Because I like their lineup a hell of a lot better than the Rugrats lineup. <laughs> nice. All right, so match four, Saiyans versus Earth Defenders. Saiyans will have Scott or Vegeta, 
and Earth Defenders will have Krillin. Um, I think I'm going to go with Earth Defenders because you guys are scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, Saiyans are doing well. I mean, friggin' they got Bardock throwing out B2s and crap. They'll have a Scout or a Vegeta in, but I just think if they keep Nappa in, your Nappa, team can dominate him. Nappa is benched or um, bench locked. He already has three benches. He's okay, then, yeah. guaranteed in. I, I think a lot of your characters can just beat through him and out, just like they're because their speed. Mm -hmm. So I think he might not be too much of a factor. So I'm going with Earth Defenders. Squeak. I gotta go with Earth Defenders. They're nine and two. That's insane. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with Earth Defenders over Saiyans. They're just a really devastating team right now. I will say, and this has nothing to do with, uh, you know, my past affiliation or whatnot. I'm gonna say Earth Defenders are the most devastating team in the league right now. Yay! <laughs> All right, and on to the. Match five, Cold versus Androids. Cold is going to have oh, Frieza. That's be a good one. Androids is going to have 16. And Aider. Aider is definitely in. So they're going to have to bench 17 Jiro or Cell. And I think because of that, Cold's going to win. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I don't know. I'm actually going to stick with I mean, the androids. The, their best bet is to rotate Jiro, and that way at least you have 17 cell. And um, yeah, I mean, so at least you have your two powerhouses there. But um, Jiro is better than Aider and probably better than 16. So yeah, 16 is yeah, the weakest. I'm, go I'm going cold. Technically, Jiro is stronger than 17. <laughs> According to the stats. Oh, Jesus. He has 50 more average damage. 50? Just 50? Yes, Not 50. even 50,000? No, 50. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would choose 17 over Jiro any day because <laughs> you can't guarantee his grabs are going to pull off. Yeah. Versus Cold, who will have Cooler, or uh, will have Frieza, will have Mecha Frieza. So they can bench King Cold, Cooler, or Meta Cooler. They're three weakest members of the team. Yeah. <laughs> that that just screams that Cold will win. I'm sorry. They they have a better setup, just like the Rugrats versus Vals. Which which honestly, I mean, and that's again why I think that their rotating Frieza against Earth Defenders was a smart move, because it's like if they if they really were playing the game, you know, and, and trying to figure this out, Earth Defenders is going to be a really tough fight. Androids, a uh, more winnable fight if tough. So let's make sure we got our A game for that. Because now, yeah, they can rotate one of their three. Look, Frieza, Team Cold's going to have Frieza, who's ranked ninth, Mecha Frieza, who's ranked fourth. And then they got their pick of who they rotate out between a 46th, 39th, and 54th ranked character. Mm hmm. It's going to yeah. be fucking tough. Yep. I'm still going with Android just to be different, though. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have match six, Blades versus Namek. And the Blades will have Janimba and Trunks. Namek will have... King Piccolo, Tambourine. And they have two benches for late Piccolo still. I think that's actually, given what how late Piccolo has been doing of late, that's an advantageous for them. That's good yeah. benching on their part. That is very good benching. I think that's going to be a very powerful Namekian team. That means that you will have Tambourine, Demon King, Piccolo. Very good chance you will have early Piccolo and Nail. I think that team could stand up to um, the Blades, especially if the Blades have to rotate out Cyborg Tal or Yajirobe. Or Tapion. Yeah, that's any of three. those three. So yeah, yeah, I I think that the blade the the Namekians could definitely take that. Mm -hmm. I will have to agree, Kyle. I'm actually going to go with the blades because um, because different, di well, different, and because I think I think their team's just 
really good, and I think they have a good chance of taking down Namek and anyone else they face. All right. Next what up... if they have to face themselves? Oh, no. I think, dun, they, dun, I, dun. I think they already face DBW, though, so they don't have to worry about the Tau off. <laughs> and, and Cyborg Tau won that handily. I remember that. Yep. Okay. On to match seven. Match seven is Super Saiyans versus Muscle. Muscle will have Garlic Jr. in. Versus Super Saiyans who will have Super Vegeta in. <laughs> oh god, there's no contest between just those two. <laughs> um, Garlic Jr., one of the weakest in mid Vegeta. <sighs> He's right? fantastic. <laughs> right? He's a goddamn Vegeta. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm thinking Super Saiyans. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> if I know Crimson, and I'm pretty sure I know him pretty well, he's benching and Goku. So that is Super Vegeta and Vegeta Trunks and Adult Gohan versus Muscle, who has to bench one of their better characters. Yeah, I'm going Super Saiyans. Uh, especially yeah. and especially because of this, I'll even go this detailed. Muscle is a great team, but they're also a slow team, and slow players get destroyed by adult Gohan. Mm -hmm. I mean that I I use that advantage fully in my match versus Muscle. Chaozu versus Muscle was just too good. Yeah, and when you've got adult Gohan who can throw out an explosive meta on every five seconds against slow opponents, it's just devastating. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Match eight, the final match of the week. Gohans versus Derp. Derp will have Salsa and Doria. Gohans will have Ultimate Gohan and Kid Gohan. They have to bench Saiyaman, Future Gohan, or Teen Gohan. And this is a divisional match. Oh, Derp, out of doubt. They're, gonna, they're just going to wipe them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not even being facetious. I'm saying Derp will win. I don't care. <laughs> I want to think Derp would win. I really do. So yeah, I'll say Derp. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else that you guys think that we need to go over? Um, I think teams just have to be doubly sure to uh, you know, double check their their uh builds. Make sure you only have two batars of each type and. You gotta yeah. get them in on time. Yeah, from now on, um, that was the the deal last week, and you saw it this week. If you have three of anything, we're not gonna tell you. We'll just inform you, hey, you done fucked up, and this is the result. We're not gonna ask you, hey, what would you like in this place? Because we have been extremely lax with these um, these things. And it's been cropping up more and more and more. Last week, because we had to completely do the muscle rotation, they had three saviors. So we randomized, and 13 did not have his savior. That's why Broly started with savior, and 13 had a six-point build. Didn't really stop Yeah, him. we basically... We're still going to be fair about it. We're not going to, like, look for the best way to hurt you on it. We're just going to randomly do your rotation... Not your rotation, sorry. Your lineup, and um, if... if like, for example, if you have no build whatsoever, we'll randomly do your lineup. And um, if you have, like, three of whatever, we will randomly choose who gets it taken off and who gets the five-point build. Yeah. So it's 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 a middle road. We're not going to let you fix it uh, because, really, that's not a penalty. That's not a penalty. Um, it's a very it, – well, no, it's not a penalty. Um, but we're also not going to look at it and go, how can we best hurt them? No, we'll just leave it up to random chance. Yeah. Random.org. Gotta pray to random.org. But, uh, yeah, that was the only thing I had. Alright. Squeak? Anything? Um. Alright, and this will conclude week 11. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you possibly next week. Hopefully next week. Goodbye! What? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs>